Hey YouTube, welcome back to what I hope will be the last installment of my Superman Adopted Son paint up. Uh, so I've already started on the cape and the legs now. You know, same as the torso, the cast was actually really good. Uh, you might be able to see on the camera there's a bit of a seam line going there. So I have already done a bit of fixing up with Milli Putt, uh, probably about two runs, you know, just the typical uh, filling up with Milli Putts, sanding it down, doing a base coat, sanding it down again. So I've done this twice now. Uh, looking in there, some very minor imperfections. Uh, going to tackle those. Just require very, very little milliput to fix those up and a few other minor imperfections. Uh, the cape was also cast really well. Uh, there were a few pockets at the bottom. Looking now they've done the base coat, there is a little uh, pock mark over there that I'll need filling up. Uh, and there were a few air bubbles that have been caught at the base uh, of the actual cape or the bottom of the cape. And, you know, there's maybe one other section here that I guess they filled afterwards, might have been a crack or something. Uh, so I'm going to fill that up as well because when that's standing or hanging from the actual torso, you will be able to see that. The cape ended up taking quite a lot of paint uh, compared to what I was expecting. The coverage of the Model Air Valero is definitely not as good as the uh, FW acrylics. Uh, but again, using, you know, I think it was uh, 60 drops of red, one drop of black, just to take that color a little bit darker. It's looking quite reflective when I look through the screen here. I have applied a satin coat. Uh, I think I might knock it down a little bit further with a bit more matte varnish. Uh, but that probably took a good four coats of paint. I haven't really worried with any uh, shading or anything just like that uh, just yet. I think I'll see what it looks like on the model once it's assembled because uh, obviously the torso itself and the legs will be casting shadows onto the cape so I might not need to worry with shading. Uh, and now for the next side I've done a little bit of masking uh, same as before just using masking tape rather than the silly putty just to get a nice tight edge. Uh, I've just used a bit of tack and some cling film then to just protect the rest of the part. Uh, so I'm going to just spray that white uh, just because I'm going to be spraying this uh, you know like a a lemon yellow again uh, so I'm just going to spray another base coat of white just to lighten that and then I'll spray that with the yellow. Uh, the reason why I'm masking it off and not just covering it with yellow I found when I was doing the emblem on the torso it took quite a lot of blue paint even to cover that yellow so I just thought it would be just easier if I just have a nice tight edge uh, and then when I spray the blue uh, sorry when I spray, spray the red I don't have to constantly try and cover all the yellow from the overspray from doing the symbol so these are the legs. Uh, again, exactly the same tone for the the red that I used for the cape and the and the symbol. Uh, so, you know, relatively uh, easy to do. Nothing too tricky. Uh, just you know, masking again. I used masking tape. It's not perfect. I just thought, you know, once I do the blue, I'm going to be doing masking as well, and I'll just go in there by hand and use a brush to just tidy up those edges. Um, so there's the you know the, the boots. I've applied a bit of a gloss finish to that. Uh, in terms of, I've also slightly textured again, going according to the Superman Returns kind of theme. Uh, so relatively shiny boots to signify, you know, leather or something to that effect. Uh, and then for the the pants, I've got uh, a bit of a matte finish on there. But again, I think once I've actually done the spraying of the blue, I'll just do the full leg and pants and everything again, just with the same sort of matte finish to get it all looking consistent. I finished the cape now. Uh, it took quite a few coats to do uh, coverage or get complete coverage. Um, even looking at the slide here, I can still see certain sections where I could probably give it another coat. Um, I probably did a good four coats of this, so I really don't want to keep going at it. Uh, and it, you know why I'm showing this update is just how I did uh, the S emblem. Uh, it proved to be quite tricky, just in that, as you know, you I first did the yellow and a masked off where I didn't want to actually uh, get yellow going over onto the, the cape, which was still white at the time, just so I didn't have to do too much cleanup. And then the converse, when I wanted to paint the cape red, I had to go and mask off the emblem. Uh, but looking at that, it was actually quite tricky because, let's see if I can find some sections here. You know, the masking tape that you use, if you're using Tamiya masking tape, uh, you know, that's pretty yellow. So when you're actually covering the emblem, it's actually quite tricky to tell if you've actually covered it correctly or not. 
Uh, so if anyone's doing this kit out there, just take that in mind. Maybe get a different color masking tape or somehow color your masking tape. Uh, so I've cleaned it up as best as I can. I don't want to spend too much time on this because particularly, uh, you know, this is going to be a display cabinet. You're not actually going to see the rear of the cape. Um, but yeah, so that was something to keep in mind. Uh, and then also what I found is, you know, the, the cape was actually in pretty good condition. I had to do a few areas of cleanup just with the milli putt. Nothing too severe. There was a bit of an undercut here that needed a bit of work. Uh, but what I've actually found, which I didn't actually see before, is just a bit of untidiness, obviously, where the, the seam of the mold would have been. Um, so far, let's see if I can get in here. I only noticed this after I actually then put down the red, so you can see some of the seam lines, which is to be expected. I just wasn't really uh, anticipating it. Um, so I guess for any cape I do in the future, anyone watching this doing a cape, do be, you know, do take care to look at the sides of the cape to make sure that you don't end up with big dings. Uh, so I'm not going to worry with this now. It is completely painted. Um, so it's going to have to do. Um, the next step now is the boots, uh, sorry not the boots, uh, masking of the boots. I've finished that up now. So as you can see here I've done the same as before. I've uh, gone in there with masking tape and you know just gone along the edges just to make sure I get a nice clean edge. And I've also done the same over here with the, you know, with the briefs. You know just tape that all along quite time-consuming as you can imagine. Um, I will definitely still have to go in there with the paintbrush because even that's not going to be perfect. Uh, but yeah, so next step is to paint the legs. So that's the legs now airbrushed, uh, looking pretty good. Also did a bit of shading just with a slightly darker blue as I did on the chest. And as you can see here, they're obviously where the masking tape was, uh, both for the red and the blue when masking those off. There are little bits on the red and the blue that need to be touched up. So I'll just go in there with the brush. I've already done it down here for the boots. Gone in there, used a brush, bit of dry brushing as well just to blend it in with the airbrush. And uh, yeah, once that's done, do a coat of satin finish or a matte finish, same as the chest. And uh, that will be that. And there he is, fully assembled. I have tried to reproduce the lighting in terms of putting in some white bulb lamps. So it's always quite tricky, you know, if you display this uh, in a normal room which has incandescent lights. Uh, you obviously have a slightly yellow lighting which means that the blue is going to look a little green. Uh, so I've got it under my daylight lamp. Uh, I've also put in a white uh, bulb in another one of my lamps. So looking through the lens or through the, the viewer here, I can't really tell uh, if this is going to be correct or not on the laptop as usual. Uh, it's looking quite a lot more, a uh, lot lighter uh, through the um, LCD screen here, uh, but uh, we'll see what this looks like on the PC. So obviously done, you know, you can see the shading coming through there, just a slightly darker tone of the same blue. And uh, I decided to leave the base completely white. I just wanted to draw the attention to the piece rather than the base. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of the bases painted completely black or something to that effect and I find it too dark. Uh, but there he is, quarter scale, 50 something centimeters, pretty big. Uh, looking at the skin tone here in the light, looking a lot paler than it is in real life. Again, when you put this in a display cabinet with natural lighting, it will look a lot darker. Uh, always quite difficult to try and decide what colors to use. Uh, but there he is. Really chuffed, gonna look great in my display cabinet. Anyway, thank you for watching. I've obviously spent quite a long time on this Superman Adopted Son. My next videos will be back on the Sinanju resin kit from G Systems. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or want to see anything else, uh, please leave your message below. I'll see you guys soon.